Thank you, Ziv. And it's great to be back at yet another Social Innovation Summit. I think this is our eighth with CECP. And in many ways, it's perhaps the most important as we really talk about the many challenges that we're facing on the COVID crisis and the latest example of racial injustice in our nation. I'm also delighted to have with us perhaps one of the best guests we've had in the over these eight years, Barbara Siemens. And Barbara is one of those CEOs who gets it and acts on it. She's the CEO of Siemens US, has 50,000 employees, $23 billion of annual revenue, nearly a quarter of which is exported beyond the US. She's a graduate of Wake Forest University and a math major, although we're not going to get into the high, high calculations today, uh, and is very involved in a number of nonprofits, including serving on the board of CCP. So we're delighted to have her on our board. We're delighted to have you here today with this audience from uh, Social Innovation Summit. Daryl, it's great to be here. And I think you called me Barbara Siemens, so that puts you in a league with the president, with Tim Apple, right? <laughs> yeah, well, similar, similar, similar. Um, well, welcome, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara Humpton, uh, CEO of Siemens. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about some pieces to start and then get into specifics about what Barb and her team at Siemens are, are, are doing here and things I think that we all can do and, and perhaps even follow in on some of the, the topics that Liam just spoke about. So again, welcome Barbara Humpton from, uh, from Siemens. Thanks. Barb, lots of talk we hear about B2B, business to business, B2C, business to consumers, but you've also spoken about B2S, business to society. Can you kind of share your thoughts on that? Siemens truly one of the companies and kind of what that means to you and, and, and to Siemens. Yeah, ask yourself the question, if a company doesn't bring value to society, why does it exist? Siemens was founded almost 173 years ago by a founder who had deep skills in engineering and who made it his mission to work on what were then the pressing emerging societal issues of the day. The, uh, think about the transatlantic cable and enabling communication across continents. Uh, think about the dynamo, the, the rise of the use of electricity. Um, think about the early use of electric power and then steam and trains. Um, it, we've, got, we've got many examples of the way Siemens actually rose to meet the needs of society at its inception. And all along the way, Werner von Siemens made a point of saying, I can't sacrifice the future for a profit today. So we focus on the long term at Siemens. We're actually, you would think of us as an infrastructure company, working on things today ranging from healthcare, very important these days, to the transformation of manufacturing with digital tools to the connectedness of infrastructure, smart city, and getting around the meter on microgrids, et cetera, and, and power generation. Um, boy, there are so many elements of our infrastructure world today, this physical world, that are transforming. And we at Siemens bring our know-how in electrification, automation, and digitalization to address those emerging trends. And these are really important issues, right? As we think about those in society who uh, can't connect with others, whether they're locked in for, uh, for COVID, whether they have been part of underrepresented populations which have not had the chance that others have had, these really represent really key areas. You know, we, we often look to our leaders in difficult times, right? To, to come up with all the solutions and uh, Admiral William McRaven, and when he was at, addressing virtually uh, MIT's graduation this year said, you know, Batman and Superwoman are not coming. It's up to us. And you've spoken a lot about this, Barb, about how the individual can really make an impact and actually has to. And maybe you can elaborate for this group, which is, like we heard from Liam, ready to roll up their sleeves to really make an impact and a difference in the world. Oh, well, that's right. And, and man, I'm so moved by what Liam did. And, and, and this is an important facet of, of who we are as businesses. You know, when COVID first emerged here in the U.S., our first question was, uh, are our employees safe and is our business sound? Uh, we really had to make sure that we immediately responded to the evolving crisis. But then very shortly after that, we turned our attention to what can we do? What, what skills and capabilities do we have that we can leverage 
to serve society at this moment of need. And what we discovered is our Health and Ears organization went to work, rolled out a new diagnostic test, and now has received emergency use authorization from the FDA for a total antibody test. Meanwhile, they continued to provide critical medical devices to help healthcare professionals with diagnosis and treatment. So really, actually inspiring response from them. But in addition to that, we started to think differently about the skills of our team and smart infrastructure. Actually formed, a, I call it SEAL Team 6, to, to look at states across the country who might need a rapid development of medical facilities. And so folks you know, rolled up their sleeves, experts in airflow management in healthcare facilities, you know, helped advise and then construct um, if in states in New York, Florida, Georgia, California, you know, the, the Siemens team was there. Everywhere we looked, we discovered we have real capabilities in our portfolio that are desperately needed now. Wow, that's great. I mean, you know, so often we, we, we look to the government or we look to NGOs to have solutions, but corporations, given the scale they have, the resources, the talent, can really make an amazing impact. A lot of them have the infrastructure that are in place to really do that. How is you get going? And I think you, you mentioned that you know, everybody wants to do something. Everybody wants to be part of the solution, particularly when we go through challenges today of the global pandemic and George Floyd and the response and reaction to that. How do you as a CEO leading 50,000 people, how do you match up those passions, those skills to the needs, to the solutions that you need? How do you go about getting the group engaged to really make that kind of an impact that they want to make? Yeah, right. actually, the thing that's sort of counterintuitive to all this is that it is actually the best therapy for us as well. So, you know, you think about being locked into your home, uh, you know, being placed under order to shelter in place and, you know, not go out and interact with people. Uh, we are a company of makers. We're creative. And so in those initial days, I think people felt cut off. One of uh, the members of my team actually said, I need to feel useful. And that just became a mantra that it, we started to look around and say, how can we empower people to bring their skills to the table and solve problems? So I think what we learned very rapidly is that COVID in particular is a hyper local issue. And what we needed to do was act less like a command and control hierarchy and more like an empowered network, taking advantage of the various skills we have, right? Experts in environmental health and safety suddenly were at the forefront leading the critical activities of the organization. Engineers, meanwhile, were thinking about what have I got on hand? We had, we had engineers who went to work putting their own at-home 3D printers into use to print um, PPE for healthcare workers in their community. David Etzweiler, the CEO of our Siemens Foundation, worked with his team to say, how do we redirect our own efforts? And I'm really proud that Siemens has donated well over a million dollars to healthcare, local healthcare facilities. These are community healthcare facilities that support those who really are in the greatest need in center cities and elsewhere, where a, a grant of $150,000 makes a real difference into, as to whether organizations stay open or not. So I guess, Daryl, the underlying thought here is that each of us as individuals are part of organizations that have a purpose. And when our own personal why lines up with the why of our organization, and we recognize that there's a need out there that needs to be addressed, boy, it's really empowering. And, and it can get us out of that cycle of anxiety about what happens to me and get us into the proactive creative process about bringing solutions to the table. Sure, that's great. I mean, in many ways, it's the multiplication of or the scaling of what we heard from Liam, where individuals can step up to really make a difference with the support of their organizations and companies. You know, CCP, right. which stands for Chief Executives for Corporate Purpose, and we have well over 200 companies that are part of our entity, including Siemens, uh, it's really been uh, encouraging to see how many of them have really stepped up during these, these incredibly challenging times to find those solutions to match their, whether it's their time, their treasure, their, their talent, 
to help to solve these, these, these really critical issues. You know, as you go through these, were there learnings you had within your organization of how to make that happen, how you really could get people engaged to do that? And I know you've, you've talked a bit about the need for empathy and yet at the same time empowerment and how those, those kind of come together. Yeah, I mean, learning number one is the power of the network, especially in a large organization. Uh, you know, there isn't time to wait for direction from somebody else. If you recognize a need, then, you know, it's important to reach out across organizational lines and, and find the right experts to help make something happen. And so seeing leaders arise all across the nation as as Siemens employees recognize needs in their communities. That, that's a real lesson for us. And, and I'll share with you that the leadership team was really energized by this. We stayed more connected than we've ever been because we needed to stay in touch. Let's find out what's going on. Let's provide situa situational awareness to each other. And then where we can make decisions that help provide a framework for leaders across the country in a distributed way, you know, then we wanted to do that. But I want to really drill down into this concept of empathy because, you know, that's not, it's not something, it's not a quality that we've talked about as a real asset in business uh, for very long. But boy, have we learned that this is a powerful tool. And, you know, Daryl, can I just say the activities of this past week bring this to the forefront even more. So I'll share with you that within Siemens, as far as the COVID crisis goes, we're a global company. We've been operating with a global crisis management team now for many weeks. And we've been learning lessons from our colleagues in China. And we've seen India now enter a really critical period, Russia as well, right? Here in the US, obviously, we've been grappling with those things that are out of our control, but controlling the things we can. And we've just reached the point where we said, you know what, we can start to ramp down crisis management and recognize this is the now normal and we have a leadership team that has this well in hand and then we had the tragic killings and and the response from communities all across the country and the recognition that a healthcare crisis leading to a, an economic crisis has actually amplified social injustices and tempers have flared and and perhaps there are even nefarious actors in the loop stirring things up right there's what's going on now is a real I'll call society crisis and so once again our leadership team tech came together and while we had been doing a lot of communication oh you know from the HR leader of our organization Mike Bokina out to all of the US employees or from health our environmental health and safety team through their networks and from time to time from me to the team in this case what we decided is we need to speak with one voice so we came together as a US leadership team and crafted our own message to Siemens employees and spoke to them first Today, we've shared our messages publicly through social media, but this is a moment to truly listen and understand because we, we tend to believe that people leave themselves at home when they come to work and they are ours while they're at work. COVID has shown us that the work-life blend is the way we need to live now for a while. This is not about balance, it's about it's about being able to be our whole selves. And so Siemens commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's always been a focus for ours, but I think this is a moment when you will see us step up and accelerate our activities. But most importantly, we need to attend to the fears, the anxieties, the anger, the sadness that's emerged as we've seen this disruption all across the country. Thanks, Barb. You know, as we go through this uh, situation, and we have some some technical challenges here from from time to time. Um, you know, the response here to COVID nineteen statements that you and your organization and actions that you're taking now around the latest you know tragic racial incident. Um, is your sense these are just point in time response to the news cycle things, or are we at a turning point here? Is this something new in terms of the role that business can play 
in society here as, as, as we go forward to really step up and be part of a solution uh, as we look to be, as companies look to be a, a force for good in the world. Yeah, well, Daryl, we've been talking, you and I, about um, response, recovery, and then reinvention. You know, we're at a moment where everything is ungelling, right? We, we can't make any assumptions based on the past about what's going to happen next. And I understand that's frightening for a lot of people, but I'm choosing to look at it as an opportunity. When else have we had an opportunity to rethink the way we work and the way we treat each other? This is a remarkable moment in history. And, and prior to last week, I'd been speaking broadly about the idea of bringing digital tools into our manufacturing world, offering jobs to people in a way that has never been available before, making it possible for us to do things here in the US um, bringing supply close to the point of demand. Those are all, those are all the what, but, but the transformation of infrastructure goes way beyond the physical items we're creating. And it really depends on our ability to engage everyone in our society. I mean, talent is equally distributed across all people. And we're at that point where we need to lift up and recognize ways that we can bring everyone into the process of creating rather than tearing down. So I think this is a moment of, of reinvention. I think this is a real opportunity for businesses if we will only take it. And I want to be part of that change, that we're going to be creating a future that we all want to live in. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it's really you know in, enlightening as you think about how do you get an organization like Siemens, hundreds of thousands of employees around the world to, to address and to deal with these uh, incredible uh, challenges. I've had the privilege over the last few months at challenges to talk to more than one CEO every day. And like many of us, I think really struggled at, at times of how we get through these. And one of my most productive calls was one with you, Barb, and David Etzweiler, head of the Siemens Foundation, and phases that we go through in these very, very difficult situations. And like Maslow's hierarchy, we, we kind of start in the response phase, and you've talked about how uh, Siemens responded in, in so many powerful ways. We're now beginning in some areas to move to a recovery phase while we respond on, on other issues. But also that as we move beyond this, this is not an opportunity for us to return back to where we had been, uh, kind of our, our return phase, but really a chance for reinvention. You know, where do we go now as business in society, as we think about society, when we deal with such fundamental issues as a global pandemic and the racial injustice we find in our nation? And I think there's more that could be coming down. How do you think about that, Barbara? How do you think about reinvention? You talk about the work that you all do so so well on infrastructure and others, which are really planting the seeds for future uh, of growth and future potential for our world. How do we think about those that that reinvention phase and the role that businesses well, can play? Yeah, I, what I would encourage all organizations to do, whether they are business or otherwise, um, to take out their strategic plan right now. Take a look at the fundamental goals you have as an organization. For us, it's addressing global megatrends like urbanization, like climate change, like the aging demographic of humans all around the world, the digitalization of everything. And now think about what actions we can be taking now to prepare ourselves as we work forward on those objectives. Build forward. We're gonna be making a lot of investments in the near term. I'd like to see our corporate social responsibility leaders really step in in this moment and remind us who we are, why we are, and have us build our action plans in ways that are sustainable, in ways that are going to, in essence, reinvent that future that we all want to live in. If we do that, I think that we can be living the things that CECP is helping to roll out that long-term initiative, that long-term framework that keeps us focused on all of the stakeholders we serve, we as businesses and, and, and other organizational entities as well. It's important to take the long view, then step back and say, what can I do today with the resources and tools I have 
to head in that direction. Thanks, Barb. And as mentioned, I have the privilege of speaking with hundreds of CEOs that are part of CGP's chief executives for corporate purpose. And it's such an honor like Barb, not only be part of our group, but on our board. And I think you understand why. This is someone who not only gets it and understands the role of today's CEO, not the old CEO of, of the past, uh, who embodies that and really delivers on that as well. So I think for all of us here, as we look for solutions to address the challenges and innovations to address the issues we face today, thank you, Barb, for your comments, for your perspective, and the great work that you and the team, the 50,000 employees you have at CSP are doing on a daily basis to make this a better world through business. Thanks, Barb. Thank you, Daryl. This has been a real privilege. Thank you all.